The Discourses of Epictetus, Book 1, Chapter 14, That the Deity Oversees All Things. When a man asks him how a man could be convinced that all his actions are under the inspection of God, he answered, Do you not think that all things are united in one? I do, the person replied. Well, do you not think that earthly things have a natural agreement and union with heavenly things? I do. And how else so regularly as if by God's command, when he bids the plants to flower, do they flower? When he, buy, when he bids them to send forth shoes, do they shoot? And when he bids them to produce fruit, how else do they produce fruit? And when he bids the fruit to ripen, does it ripen? When again he bids them to cast down the fruits, how else do they cast them down? And when to shed the leaves, do they shed the leaves? And when he bids them to fold themselves up and to remain quiet and rest, how else do they remain quiet and rest? And how else at the growth and the wane of the moon and at the approach and recession of the sun are so great an alteration and change to the contrary seen in earthly things? But are plants and our bodies so bound up and united with the whole and are not our souls much more? And our souls are so bound up and in contact with God's as parts of him and portions of him. And does not God perceive every motion of these parts as being his own motion conate with himself? And now are you able to think of the divine administration and about all things divine and at the same time also about human affairs and to be moved by 10,000 things at the same time in your senses and in your understanding and to ascend to some and to descend from others and again as to some things to suspend your judgment. And do you retain in your soul so many impressions from so many and various things and being moved by them? Do you fall upon notions similar to those first, first impressed? And do you retain numerous arts in the memories of 10,000 things? And is not God able to oversee all things and to be present with all and to receive from all a certain communication? And is the sun able to illuminate so large a part of the all and to leave so little not illuminated that part only which is occupied by the earth's shadow? And he who made the sun itself and makes it go round, being a small part of himself compared with the whole, cannot he perceive all things? But I cannot, the man may reply, comprehend all these things at once. But who tells you that you have equal power with Zeus? Nevertheless, he has placed by every man a guardian, every man's daemon, to whom he has committed the care of the man. A guardian who never sleeps is never deceived. For to what better and more careful guardian could he have entrusted in each of us? What When then you have shut the doors and made darkness a friend, remember never to say that you are alone, for you are not. But God is within, and your daemon is within. And what need have they of light to see what you are doing? To this God, you ought to swear an oath, just as the soldiers do to Caesar. But they who are hired for pay swear to regard the safety of Caesar before all things. And you who have received so many and such great favors, will you not swear? Or when you have sworn, will you not abide by your oath? And what shall you swear? Never to be disobedient, never to make any charges, never to find fault with anything that he has given, and never unwillingly to do or to suffer anything that is necessary. Is this oath like the soldier's oath? The soldiers swear not to prefer any man to Caesar. In this oath, men swear to honor themselves before all.